Hey guys, it's Missy, and welcome back to Books and a Baby. So today's video is my five star predictions. I have five books on this list, and each one of them I think I'm going to love. Most of them are sequels, but I do have two that are standalones. So let's get started. So book number one is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. And this is a story that says on Goodreads, um, Hugh Shuggy Bane, a sweet and lonely boy who spends his 1980s childhood in a rundown public house in Glasgow, Scotland. Thatcher's policies have put husbands and sons out of work, and the city's notorious drug epidemic is waiting in the wings. Shuggy's mother, Agnes, walks a wayward path. She is Shuggy's guiding light, but a burden for him and his siblings. She dreams of a house with its own front door while she flicks through the pages of the free man's catalog, ordering a little happiness on credit, anything to brighten up her gray life. Married to a philandering taxi driver, husband, Agnes keeps her pride by looking good. Her beehive, makeup, and pearly white false teeth offer a glamorous image of a glas Glasgowing Elizabeth Taylor. But under the surface, Agnes finds increasing solace in drink, and she drains away the lion's share of each week's benefits. All the family has to live on, on cans of extra strong lager hidden in handbags and poured into tea mugs. Agnes's older children find their own way to get a safe distance from their mother, abandoning Shuggy to care for her as she swings between alcoholic binges and sobriety. Shuggy is meanwhile struggling to somehow become the normal boy he desperately longs to be, but everyone has realized that he is no right, a boy with a secret that all but him can see. Agnes is supportive of her son, but her addiction has the power to eclipse everyone close to her, even her beloved Shuggy. A heartbreaking story of addiction, sexuality, and love, Shuggy Bang is an epic portrayal of a working class family that is rarely seen in fiction. So, that right there, like, I love seeing family dynamics, and I'm actually really excited to read this one. The next book on the list is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Farseer trilogy. And this one says, Fitz has survived his first hazardous mission as King's assassin, but is left little more than a cripple. Battered and, beat and bitter, he vows to abandon his oath to King Shrewd, remaining in the distant mountains. But love and events of terrible urgency draw him back to the court of Buckkeep into the deadly intrigues of the royal family. Um, I read the first book in this series, Assassin's Apprentice, a few years ago, um, and I'm actually going to be rereading that first book so that I can jump into this one, but I, I loved the first book, and I think I'm going to love this second one just as much. So book number three is Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. Um, and this is the third book in the Wayfarer series, which is a bunch of companion novels. The first one is called A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. And I like going into these not knowing a whole lot. So this just says centuries after the last humans left Earth, the Exodus fleet is a living relic, a place many are from but few outsiders have seen. Humanity has finally been accepted into a galactic community, but while this has opened doors for many, those who have not yet left for alien cities fear that their carefully cultivated way of life is under threat. Tessa chooses to stay home when her brother Ashby left for the stars, but has to question the decision when her position in the fleet is threatened. Kip is a reluctant young apprentice 
itches for change but doesn't know where to find it. Sawyer, a lost and lonely newcomer, is just looking for a place to belong. A disaster rocks this allegedly fragile community. Those ex exodens who still call the fleet their home can no longer avoid the inescapable question. What is the purpose of a ship that has reached its destination? So, um, I gave both the first two books in this series um, five stars. I thought they were fantastic. I love Becky Chambers' writing, and I think it just, it lends itself to those who don't read a whole lot of science fiction, but it does actually work very well. The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. This is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy, and I just reread the fifth season in December and really, really loved it. And so I want to continue on with this series this year. So this one, let's just say, okay, so it says the season of endings grows darker as civilization fades into the long cold night. Asun has found shelter, but her missing daughter, but not her missing daughter. Instead, there's alabaster tin, tin ring destroyer of the world with a request that would seal the fate of the stillness forever. Really excited to continue on with this series. So the last one we have is The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I have heard loads of people talk about how much they love this book. So the description on Goodreads says, a magical island, a dangerous task, a burning secret. Lioness Baker leads a quiet, solitary life. At 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records. As a caseworker at the department of, in charge of magical youth, he spends his day overseeing the well-being of children in government-sanctioned orphanages. When Lioness is unexpectedly summoned by extremely upper management, he's given a curious and highly classified assignment. Travel to... Marsyas Island Orphanage, where six dangerous children reside. A gnome, a sprite, a wavern, an unidentifiable green blob, and a were Pomeranian, and the Antichrist. Lioness must set aside his fears and determine whether or not they're likely to bring about the end of the days. Lioness grows, oh, but the children aren't the only secret the island's keeping. Their caretaker is a charming and enigmatic Arthur Parnassus, who will do anything to keep his ward safe. As Arthur and Lioness grow closer, long-held secrets are exposed, and Lioness must make a choice. Destroy a home or watch the world burn. An enchanting story, masterfully told, The House on the Cerulean Sea is about the profound experience of discovering an unlikely family in an unexpected place and realizing that family is yours. Love found families. So anyways, those are the five books that I think will be five stars. If you've read any of these books, please let me know down in the comments below what you gave this, these books. And let me know if you think I'm going to like them. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, hit subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified when I post new videos. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!